Hey MMA fans, Cage Mind, your host Micah Frankel. Back today with another very special guest for an interview. We get UFC fighter Tim Means who will be competing June 8th versus Justin Silas. UFC FX3. How are you feeling, Tim? I'm feeling great. I'm going, going back with that, that classic on now. you ready to run it. Right. You normally train here in New Mexico, right? But you're finishing up this week at uh, Power and Fitness MMA, right, in Arizona? Right, exactly. So, what are you looking to do now this week out in Arizona, a week before the fight? What's your focus out there? Um, my focus now is uh, wrestling and cutting weight. Um, it's getting uh, back to the card well. Uh, I really don't know how it's getting time down, uh, stepping shots, and uh, just don't believe don't really the rest of the out there. Okay, and then you coming from the striking background, do you feel it's an advantage coming into most fights knowing that most guys are going to want to take you down, try to put you on your back, not want to strike with you? Um, kind of, I guess, uh, I have first started with wrestling, so uh, I feel like doing that here, I get back to my roots. Um, you know, I, I get back to the striking really well, but, um, you know, I, I don't really feel I have any advantage of that, so I put in harder work than everybody else and show at the end of the fight. Okay. In this fight, like I said, you versus Justin S Silas. What what do you expect? What do you expect we could see from this fight? How do you break this one down, from your opinion? Uh, my opinion, I feel that Silas going to come out and try to stand. Uh, he, he thinks that uh, he's adapted from wrestling to being a good boxer. Um, I feel he wants to start the exchange, and I catch him a couple times to his uh, back to wrestling and uh, a couple stuff to take down. So when I step to take down, he's, he's I'd, I'd say that's a pretty fair assessment. I saw his last fight went versus Cuivaden, and that seemed to be the M.O. Strike, and if you get hurt, then come in for the takedown. Right. And then we saw from your last fight coming in two weeks' notice, wasn't it, right? Uh, like two days' notice, yeah. Yeah, something like that. Very short notice. How was that, first of all, getting the call and the short notice to go up to the UFC? Uh, I was very excited. I just I just won the key to coach that I really worked at it. Uh, got, got a phone call that uh, somebody could make contact with me. They gave me a fight against the Bernardo Magdalenas. We had a bunch of hype behind him. Um, I was in really good shape and uh, just really excited to step up and, uh, and show the world who we were. Um, winning that fight, uh, I really, really respected his ground game, but the just coach here, Andre, I uh, was seeing this with the guy, uh, came highly recommended that the dude's been just on the ground, so, um, I stayed real patient in the fight, really didn't follow him to, to the ground a whole lot, and, uh, I kind of disappointed that it went to a decision, but I was really happy with following the game plan and staying patient, and that's kind of hard to do in the fight. Right. So, were you frustrated at some points in that fight? I rewatched it a little bit ago, and it just kind of looked like when he was uh, rolling on his back trying to pull guard and hesitant to get up once the ref was kind of forcing him, it looked like you were getting a little more angry about that. Was that the case, uh, or? Uh, no, no, I, I wasn't getting angry that, uh, 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 let me start over. I was getting angry that, uh, I won that win bonus, or that knockout bonus, or if I had denied something like that, $50,000. Um, having to chase the dude around, you know, they kind of, they kind of started crap, they hold it on Omaha, was smirking at me, kind of laughing at me, thinking that, uh, I didn't take this serious or whatever, and, uh, you know, I'm just a stranger style, I like to make my fights personal, and, uh, he, he played right into my, right into my game. Um, the fact that uh, he didn't, he didn't want to engage and kept going backwards. That, that was kind of frustrating because I thought my coach didn't have to finish the guy, but um, like I said, I really respected his ground game. I didn't want to make a mistake and just get injured. Right, and again, that was a brilliant performance. The way you were landing, it, laying in those knees and working the body, the boxing was beautiful. Um, so from that, how important do you think the body shots are in MMA to breaking an opponent down throughout a long three-round fight? Oh, I think they're everything. Uh, I think mean, I think people are headhunting too much, and I really feel that it only takes one body shot to change the momentum in a fight. 
Um, I, I got to land some big shots on Bernardo's the body, and he's really good to like him. I think he's the guy who like him take down and made a big difference going into the third round, going into that 15 minutes, you know. Right, and as I rewatched that fight, there was that last last body shot, I think it was around a minute and 40 seconds left, and you had got on top, started allowing some ground and pound, and my thought of how tough he is kind of went up a lot too, because it looked like you had him totally beaten, and it was a little bit of credit to his part to be able to withstand all that to make it to the decision. But again, it was a great performance from you. So what now to build on that are we, could we expect to see from you? Um, I'm going into the same exact game time as last time. Uh, like I was using Bernardo at six. And then I put Salas on his back and going for the kill. Um, I got to drop Bernardo up to some of my ground in town, but I really just didn't want to get sweat. You know, I went to that choke early in the first round. I dropped him and he sweat me. Uh, I, I don't, I don't expect Salas to that. Uh, he, he, if I put him on his back, I'm going to take his solutions and I'm going to go for the kill. Alright, so we're looking for you to take it to Justin Salas. So now right. competing at lightweight, we know from your King of the Cage days you were two t uh, two weight class champion. Uh, did you feel at that time more comfortable between 155 or the 60, or does it really matter? You feel the same at both? Uh, you know, I felt really strong at 155. I, I, I just made the way. I made, the, I made 155 twice in three weeks. Um, and with the cardio level, the amount of uh, water we were taking in, and then all the food I was taking in, I was really happy with my nutritionist and, and, and my trainers on how they got me prepared for that fight. Um, I feel like stand out height-wise, and I'm not a real muscular dude, but at the height advantage, you reach the advantage, I feel like stand out in that, in that division, I think I can make a, a real splash in it. Right. It's definitely one of those things. I don't think that I've ever seen a 55er taller than you, and that reach is definite, and the way that you put it together also is just great to watch. Um, one other thing to ask about the weight classes. In the UFC, there's eight weight classes, and uh, you came from King of the Cage, and there's like ten, I think. Would you like to see more weight classes, or have a real opinion on that or anything for the bigger show? Well, you know, I, I, I don't have a real opinion on it. I think that UFC does really well with the weight class they have. Maybe I have an opinion on uh, maybe a weight class in between 70 and 55 since that's such a good jump, or 70 and 85 since there's 15 pounds in between those weight classes. Maybe something there. But uh, right now it's 155 or 170 and those are weights we've got to make. Okay. And we know you're with the UFC now, and when you're with the UFC, they really don't like their fighters to do other things. But you have had past experience in boxing. So would there be a time where you see yourself wanting to do that again? Um, you know, yeah. Uh, we tried to fight on, um, and, and we still got the giant copy of family. Um, I'm real sorry to hear what happened, you know, that was my friend. Crazy guy, Johnny. Um, but we were trying to get on this car that was just at the Route 66 car where uh, Josh Otis most that spot, and we called Dana White, or Joe Silva, I should say, and, uh, they, they thought about it and they didn't let me do it, so, um, you know, I've always been a fighter at heart, but, uh, right now it's only the UFC, that's all I can do right now. Okay. Figured that much would happen. Um, also want to talk about, you started off your career and we know that you took the big long break from 2000, from March 2005 to like February 2009. You've been on a tear since then. But what did you do on that time that reasserted to yourself that fighting was what you wanted to do? Uh, uh, in that time, I did a bunch of drugs. I drank a bunch of alcohol, and I did a bunch of jail in prison time. Uh, sitting in prison, looking out the window through the bar barrel. Um, I knew that wasn't my life, and I knew that wasn't the kind of person that I was. So. Uh, when I, first got back, when I first came back in February of 2009, I wasn't even sure if I wanted to fight. I just had a little bit of anger, and I needed to make a little bit of money because I didn't, I didn't have nothing. And uh, just got a little serious with it, and uh, I realized I still had it in my blood. And uh, Tom and Alvin has done a great job with me in my career, and uh, we're, we're right here right now, and I'm really blessed to have a second chance for all this. Right. That's great to hear that you're turning everything around and all of this. I didn't expect to hear that. Wow. Um, again, 
with what you've done into now being on that tear, what do you owe that to? Such reeling off the 14 one and one record now over your last 15 since that time. Was there a change in your training? Do you think it was a maturity? What do you owe all that to? Uh, responsibility. You know, when I was young, I didn't have no responsibilities. I kind of just, I only had myself to care about. Um, sitting in, sitting in jail cell, calling home, I got to talk to my nephews, and they were starting to realize where I was at, and uh, it's time to hit at home, you know, missing Christmases and missing, missing Thanksgivings and stuff. Um, to show me how important my family was for me, and that they really stuck, stuck by my side through, uh, thick and thin. And I felt I owed them more than me just sitting in the jail cell, I needed to take care of them, you know, so, uh, I, I wouldn't be where I'm at without my mom and dad, and without my nephews, and my, my girlfriend Brenda and her family. I, I really got some awesome people back to me. Uh, I made my group smaller. I, I don't, I don't stick my hand out to people I don't, I don't know. I, I'll shake hands and, and hi and how are you? But my group's real small with, with my family, and there's a number of stuff by my side when I was doing bad or when I was doing good. So that, that opened my eyes in a lot of ways. Okay, so you've had your troubles in the past, and idle hands are the devil's playground. So, what else do you do now to consume your time to keep you in that positive path? Uh, what I do now is, um, you know, there's always someone chasing you to fight you. You know, uh, there's a UFC belt out there that a Ben Henderson has, or Vincent Henderson. Uh, that's the belt I want. There's a bunch of good dudes in the 155 pound division, and. Uh, I want to fight each and every one of them. So if uh, those are the guys I want to fight, cream of the crop, I better stay in shape because uh, the 155 pound division stacked in the UFC. There's a bunch of good athletes there. So um, keep my fingers crossed, stay healthy, and uh, just uh, live one fight at a time. Optimally, how many times would you? Uh, we're halfway into the year. How many times would you still like to get back in the cage though before the year runs out? Uh, I'm thinking at least three. You know, we got this fight, this fight I got to worry about, and I'm thinking probably two or three more times. Uh, is that goes right? Awesome. Hope to see that. Hope to see you in the cage because that was an extremely entertaining performance to watch. Um, Thank you. Anytime. Um, give you a moment now to shout out to anyone uh, who you feel needs recognition from you, sponsors, trainers, your family, everyone. Again, you can do that. Um, I, I want to thank my team of Kidding HB, Donald Sanchez, Sarah Lobato, uh, Tom Bond, Arlene Bond, everybody is fit. Uh, I got my parents to thank, my girlfriend Brenda to thank, uh, Irma and Felix, all my nieces and nephews, Amari, Alina, uh, all, all my family, my, my sponsor, Head Rush, Hayabusa. Um, you know, there's, just, there's so many people to thank that have really stood by my side and helped me where I'm at. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mexico, for supporting me. I love you guys. I love the 505. Uh, let's go get another win next week in Florida. Can't wait to see you do that. Thank you for the time. And it's great to hear that passion in your voice, the spirit, and also to, sh to be a role model out there that you can turn your life around, get on that positive track. Everyone, remember to watch the FX3 show. For the UFC, June 8th, see Tim Means, throw down and go to war with Justin Salas. Best of luck on that. This has been Cage Minds, Uncage the War Within Yourself. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.